Renair, Renair, come here. What? Come, come here. It's your turn. Oh, my turn for. It's it's your turn to record an intro. Ah, yes, you've done one of these with Vincent and Lidar already. Yes, yes. So here's my advice: you got to start high, mm -hmm. and you got to use your full range. You got to you got to use the all the inflections. That's a lot of guidelines. No, it's okay. Just just try it. Just try it. So when you mean start high, you mean like start high like no, this? No, like higher. Like this? Like higher. Like this? Yeah, that's a good start. Okay, place. right and here. You want to make sure you use your full range. When you say range, do you mean to like drop down? Yeah, like lower. Like this? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I'm trying. Okay. Uh, this. Awesome. Let's try it. Give us. So give I us have a to line. go from here to here. Yes. Okay. You're listening to the Strings of Fate podcast. My name is Renair Neverember, and my name's Azarum. Uh, enjoy the show, please. Azram, it is with bated breath that you look into the eyes of the other Genasi staring up at you, your own eyes looking back. The face is tired, pale, you're not sure what's going to happen next, and you brace yourself. For a sudden impact, you brace for anything, thinking immediately to the family outside the room, the people around you. And a weak voice responds to you. Father, I failed. Make an insight check for me. Nine. <laughs> you have no idea what's going on. And this person, who is most likely not that much different in age to you, just called you father? But kind of looking at them, there is a bit of delirium to what they're saying. They're just kind of mumbling under heavy breathing. Uh, Azrim, you can just hear them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please. Please. What, what did you fail? I'm sorry. I couldn't, I couldn't go through with it. I had so many opportunities, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Couldn't do what? The people in the room. I, I, who would be there? Vincent? Ladara? You're hearing this. Bonnie, and Bonnie is leaned up against the wall towards the back, just kind of looking onward. You can see one hand resting on the on the uh, grip of her gun. And Renair also nearby, just in case. The family, Adela, Adelaide, Adelaide, again, has sort of motioned to move forward, but Adela is holding her back. And it's hard to get any coherent conversation out of this person. He just keeps repeating the words, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, please. Please, I can make this up. I can make this up. I could, I could try again. I'm sorry. You can feel just the wind slowly beginning to pick up in the room. And you can see sweat pouring off the forehead, intermingling with the moisture of the washcloth across the forehead. What do you do? I'm gonna be... I'm gonna look at him and I'm gonna say... Where is your father? The... Words, you feel they don't preach this person. And as they are constantly repeating these apologies, and in this bed, you feel that same wind, that 
start to pick up Uh-oh. in the room. I need to calm down. <laughs> and you can feel your hair, all of you just feel this intense force beginning to build. You see the shelves start to shake. Ezra, what's happening? What's happening? I'm so sorry. What's happening? Oh, please. Oh, we, we, please don't. Please don't. We need to calm him down. Oh. Ezra's got it. it. It's okay. It's okay. You can just try again. Make a charisma check. We'll say. I'm gonna with Azram's got it. I'm giving you bardic inspiration. It's a D six or D four. It's like a D ten or T eight now, right? D ten. It's a D ten. You get to add to it. Bardic inspiration. Do we rock him? We really moving on up in the world. (laughs) Doing big things. 16. 16. There is this sweeping wind that picks up the room, and you can see now things along the wall being pulled off the shelves. They quickly begin to... Adelaide and Adela, um, panicked, looking towards all of you, see, but you hear Adela say, what? What's happening? What are they... The wind is picking up your hair, whipping it around as if caught in a storm now. And you can hear just can I, of things getting caught. Can I try casting Charm Person? Ooh. You sure can. Spell save DC is 18, right? Yep. It's a wisdom saving throw? Mm-hmm. Would you, would you be doing that like as you're saying you can try again? Probably... Azram, as this veritable tornado of wind is kicking up in this small, cramped space, debris flying, you see Adelaide shriek as she ducks and glassware shatters across the wall. Azram, you quickly take this figure as they are panicking, their breath becoming out of control, and you release the energy of the spell. Say those words. You can try again. Their eyes go wide. And their body settles to rest as the wind dies down. They're in your arms, but they are not conscious in this moment. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I just... We could... I mean, I can... I can heal him. Yeah. And I can get information from him. But what if he tries to kill me again? Or I can kill him. It seems like he doesn't want to. I guess that's probably what he's been trying to do. Which makes sense. But... I mean... We could tie him down, wait till he wakes up, or wait till we can heal him, and... Is this like a... Is this poison? Is this like a curse? Is this... What is... It seems he's been poisoned, but... I don't know how to fix it, but I'm sure that there are people who can. But does he deserve it? I don't know. I mean, I guess that's up to you. If you want to heal him and you want to talk to him it's your call after all who of us gets to decide whether someone deserves to live or die right I guess you hear footsteps from down the hallway and Adelaide and Adela are pushed past, as you see, their mother walk into the room, um, turn to her daughters and say, I'm, I'm sorry, but could you give us some privacy? Adela and Adelaide look to her, kind of questioning, and then nod their heads as they leave and close the sliding door. She looks and she says, I'm sorry that I've 
been so rude as to not introduce myself when I first walked in. So I didn't know your intentions. It's all right. I'm Selk. I am, uh, lived here for generations now, down in the Undercity. Selk? Uh, Selk. Huh. And I've carried a suspicion since Adelaide brought this one into our care. And seeing you, she turns to Azram, some things don't feel like coincidences. So I'd like to talk. I'd love to. She motions over to just sit around the unconscious Air Genasi. And she says, At first I want to apologize, because Adela is very protective of our family. And she's very protective of people in our care, but it's because she's seen a lot of people. Well lost. Tell me, um, your name, you said it was Mr. Azzy, but do you have a full name? Azram Asinkar. So it is true. Do you know much of your father? No. I did. Once upon a time. Long, long time ago. Like, how long ago? Well, however old Adelaide is, there's a sorrowful look on her face, as if she's recalling painfully sweet, but somewhat Tainted memories. Are, are, are you are you saying that Adelaide is like related to me? In a way, I suppose it would be half sister, though she never knew her father. He had more kids. <laughs> I mean, that he never told me, but. Your existence, and I think his existence is the confirmation of that. You look so much like him. I hate that. Me too. Oh my god. And I'm sorry. I hold no ill will against you or him. I do. I do quite a bit. I mean, him, she points over. I, in the time that I knew your father, he was sweet up until he wasn't. And I realized that I was just a piece of a game that he was playing long, long ago. And I loved him. <laughs> but he left. When he found out I was with child. Oh my god. Piece of shit. He was... She stops for a second. I'm sorry, I... I've launched into this and started talking so candidly about these things that involve you and I... I don't know if you want to hear them. I do. I really do. It's... just hard. I don't... I don't know anything about him. Then, this might be painful to hear. I do not know this person 
what his relation is to your father. She points down to the air genasi again. But in the few moments that you've been here, there's a familiar charm that he had that you carry. And I know that that can be painful to hear, especially as you don't regard him in the best of terms, and neither do I. But seeing your face, seeing his face again, I was waiting for the same thing as you, I think, for this one to wake up so that I could have an answer, some closure. I don't know. Do you know where he is? I wish I did. But I can tell you this. There are nights when I find Adelaide out on the balconies overlooking the outside. She knows nothing of her heritage. I've tried my best to keep her in touch with the roots of the Air Genasi, the roots to Suvo. Which, by the way, you can make a religion check if you'd like to check on what that is. A block, do you know that? Fifteen. Fifteen is enough. Zuvo is the one of the primordial gods, the god of the wind. Um, but there are nights where she stands on that balcony. And she tells me that a wind pushes her east. And I don't know what to tell her. I just tell her to ignore it. Me too. I feel the same thing. We should... We should heal him. He's my brother after all, right? She doesn't say anything. But she just... Gives you almost a sorrowful glance. Just... Sadness in her eyes and recognition. Of family. Did he... Did he give you a name? His name. And I point at the Arjunasi on the floor. Heads or tails? Me? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you. Heads. No. Fuck. Every time he awakes, he cries out sorrowfully. He cries out in pain, or he, he only apologizes, and that wind kicks up. Has Ezram ever told us the name of his his dad? No. One of them. You said. Oh, Elliot. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. No, not this, this one. This different one. Okay. Different dad. Okay. How old is Adelaide? Adelaide is is older than you. Okay. That's older than you. Name. It's surprising because she looks quite young and and terms of uh just her countenance but when she says the age basically it's a good amount older than you damn i i don't know if you want we can try to find somebody to deal with that poison if you want to take precautions and tie him up we can and then we can talk to him maybe get a name his name or I mean yeah we sh- we should do that what the fuck are you rolling Why? for <laughs> checking something he's like oh, all he's of a sudden something. the roof blows off and <laughs> watches it the guards come back <laughs> got you they were oh. like oh we missed something and they came back <laughs> pieces um you see Silk 
sort of wipes a tear. Much older woman. Um, and a strange, though there is no blood relation between you and Selk, there's a strange kinship to know that this person has come across him. I grab her hands together. And then I, like, I'm so sorry for everything. I feel a sense of responsibility. And I look her in the eyes and I say, I will kill him. She looks at you, her eyes are classy. She looks and she sort of backs up and she says, no. I'm sorry. I can see that you carry so much pain. She places her hand to your heart, looks at you, and says, For so long, and I could never feel what you are feeling. But I can say that his actions are not your failings. She backs up. She says, excuse me, if you'd like to stay for dinner, I'll need to restart it as, well, things got a little hectic back there, but we'd love to have you. And I'll have a talk with my my children. Azram's like holding back tears just a little bit. Oh. And he's like, is it vegan? <laughs> It is. In okay. fact, I was going to ask if that's all right. It's preferred. She smiles, stands, makes your way out, and even um, pushes her way through the sliding door, closes it behind her. You're left there, Bonnie Renair, Vincent Ladara, Azram, and the unconscious Air Genasi. What do you do? Azram, how are you feeling? It's a lot to take in. I feel a sense of disgust knowing that there are more people who have possibly had to go through the same things that I've had to go through. But at the same time, I feel like I have a family for the first time in so long. Ladar is gonna walk up and just hug Azram and like hold his head against her chest. He just quietly accepts the hug. Oh, I love him so much. Oh, Azzy. There's a cool breeze. That is even stronger in this room. And you realize as you hold Nazrim to your chest that it is the combined wind of the air genasi that passes through Azram's hair, through the other unconscious one's hair, and combines into just a swirling breeze, almost in harmony with each other. I'll be honest, I've never wanted to kill your father more than in this current moment. So, uh... I'm ready. If you ever need the backup, I'm right there with you. I'll do whatever you need. Yeah, he's a real grade-A piece of shit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you never said what... Do you mind... What's his name? Do you know? His name is Usu Essen. And there's a flash thunder in your mind as a booming voice proclaims his name in your memories where you first and only had heard that name standing in that doorway almost to lord it over you remember my name boy and you wince as saying the name always brings that memory back we don't have to say it too many more times. I just wanted to know. 
just in case we're looking and we need, you know, something to go off of. Do you do you want a moment alone with this? We can try to go out and send for some, I don't know, find a healer somewhere. If you'd like to stay. Yeah, I think I would. Um, all right. We can go. Um, you going to be all right by yourself? Do you want Adara to stay with you or... I can help in the kitchen, I guess. Your talents are elsewhere. <laughs> Ladara, yeah, I've never, you're, I've never you're seen right. you cook. I, I, I just want to offer. I mean, if I feel bad, the whole thing was just completely You could, you could always offer to help. You could also, you could, I mean, it depends on what I you would like to do. I'm not very good at cooking, but I just, you know, I just feel, Me I just Aaron feel bad. I could go out and find a healer. I don't know. Well, we'll leave you. If you need anything, I don't know how you could say word, but it's okay. you know, we'll figure it out. I feel I'll check in on you. I feel fine here. If I need anything, I'll okay. I believe you'll be fine. These people will protect you. I believe. I hope. <laughs> so we'll walk out. Okay. So Ladar, you want to help? Yeah, I'll stay and I'll I'll try and help. Sure. And then Vincent and anyway. mm-hmm. Bonnie will also join you. Bonnie okay. sort of says, Oh, um, I'll join you as well. You know the undercity better than us, so slightly, yeah. Um she walks out with you, um, sort of turns to Della and says, We have not had any time to catch up. I'm so sorry about <laughs> that. And Della says, Listen, at this point it's good to see you again. And they sort of um give each other just like a quick like handshake like the interlocking yeah, handshake like a bro yeah bro into a hug and that sort of thing <laughs> um and they bonnie looks over and says um we'll catch up after this um we're heading what are we trying to do i if you know any healers down here anybody who's got even just a a shop with with medicines is is enough we just need something that'll combat that poison Adelaide, who's been rather silent this process, kind of fidgeting her thumbs, looks over and says, I don't know what kind of poison that affects him, but if you're going to start somewhere, she bites her lip as she really contemplates what she's about to say. You might want to start somewhere around Miss Valentina. Oh, really? I only say this because there's one voice that I recognize chasing the figure, and it was her. Mackie. Tyron. I see. So you think that they would know what kind of poison it is? Yes, because my suspicion is that they were the ones that inflicted it upon him. Right. All right, well. Um. I guess, yeah, we could go found out there. Or uh, I probably shouldn't be walking around outside, I realized. <laughs> I'm a fugitive. Yeah, that's moment. actually a good point. Um, Did you, could you tell what kind of, what kind of poison that was? You couldn't tell what kind. Okay, you could tell yeah, that it was powerful, thought. but you couldn't tell what kind. I, no, I could not. I could tell that for any regular person, it would kill them. Mm. Luckily, he's powerful, obviously. All right, so at least we've got that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, then, then I guess the three of us can go back and try to f- see if there's... A, we. I mean, we could ask, but also we could... Snoop around, I don't know. Adela speaks up. I point you towards traditional, you know, Aquain healers, but mm. unfortunately, that sort of thing is very much cracked down upon in this town. Mm. So Even down here? Even down here. It's the one thing they'll allow. You know, um, they don't really allow the clerics and the knights of the morning lord down here as they would have a frenzy seeing all of the people that are touched by vondrick gods and hold the old vondrick ways but 
they have allowed them well, for wouldn't. their own conscience they... to crack down on the old medicine, if you will. You know, part of me thinks that if they came down here, they wouldn't be able to take all of you. They'd be outnumbered. We think the same. But those are um, those are words that uh, are shared in private. And uh, she gives you a knowing smile and says, and people are working on. Have you ever heard of a person named Astrid? Oh, well, I am a law-abiding, upstanding citizen. No, I <laughs> must be that awful, <laughs> that awful in instigator I've read about so All much right. in the papers. <laughs> no? No. Well, if you ever want to know more, though, maybe I might know the place. But, um, for now, why don't we focus on the task at hand? I know. She just, she left a lovely impression. I'm <laughs> horrified to hear that. <laughs> so, I guess then, pointing us in the right direction. Thank you. And, mm. um, Ladar, stay I'll, hidden. I'll, I'll be here. You're good at that. Stay, stay staying, hidden. Staying yeah. hidden. Should we, should we all go back together? Or should you guys, like, go back? It is, like, the middle of the night, so I don't know if... It's like we woke up at, like, 9 p.m. It is, like, the middle of the that night, yeah. True. So should we all, like, go back and ask Valentina about it? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Um, I mean, Vincent gets that information. And how long would it take to get back there? Um, It took over an hour to get to this spot, but that was also, like winding through crowd so you assess like an hour or two at the worst if you're trying to like take like sneaky routes around because mm. you won't be able to i mean I, I won't be able to help with any stealthy things. yeah but i also they haven't seen me technically but yeah i mean i guess he he would want to not necessarily leave Azram alone um we're like in kind of that vulnerable state for that long so he would he would come back in and probably tell you guys that like if we want to do anything like and and help him we might need to go together to see valentina oh okay okay, okay. so we can spend the night if 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 you'll have us uh selk um, got the extra beds or we'll sleep on the floor there's not a lot of space but if you are all right with a few cushions on the floor then it's fine with me. All right. Well, dinner's almost ready. But um, if you'd like to lend a hand, I can show you a bit. Yeah. Could could someone lead me to the the, the bathroom? I just yes. want to wash this out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, you. But I thought it looked quite lovely. I'm. I don't want it to stay like this. <laughs> it's down the hall on the left. All right. Thank the room you. on the right is the bedroom for everybody, and then my room was where, well, you know, she points down at the hall at the end uh ah. the end of the hall excuse me all right thank you very thank you very much and i go <laughs> it's even more it's a very cramped space like i said established there's plumbing in this world but <laughs> um, it's a cramped space and but it's you're able to wash stick as much as you can out. The sink. stick your head under the sink basically like, <laughs> there's out. like I'm red dye like, dripping everywhere i'm like oh. yeah it looks, looks like, like a murder scene <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can someone help? <laughs> I can if you want me uh, to. Adela I, walks in I, and, thank God. and sort of. I can't uh, see the back of my head. Yeah, no, it's all right. And she starts to take. <laughs> you don't have to bend your head under the sink. Just oh. starts to take some of the water and then just kind of oh, with her wow. hands like shapes water around wow. it and begins to use it to pull <gasps> some of the dye out. That's so cool. Um, She's a witch. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get her. Um, you all now are you gonna keep your hair like that or no <laughs> i would like to go next but also it's not imperative to me unless this is permanent if i don't it's get it not no no no. it's it'll be fine oh thank goodness and uh, then um, i know well you know what it's permanent no no no, no. <laughs> make a deception check <laughs> it's not it's not permanent 18 <laughs> it's not per i i wouldn't do that i, I know no it's fine it's fine okay. it'll be fine right. see we're now m mine's washing out see 
It's all right. Looks in, sees the blood red <laughs> sink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but, I mean, even if it wasn't, you still you still look lovely like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you look okay. good with whatever hair color you have. Well, thank you. Is Vincent still disguised as a human? Uh, yeah. Oh, it would have. If it's this guy's self, it would have worn off. After it would have, yeah. It ev- eventually would have worn off, but like nobody would have said anything, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. All of a sudden, he just like, turns green. Like, you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we wouldn't say anything. His horns grow out, and then everyone's like, oh. the two little twins are like, <gasps> as they see the horns <laughs> appear. <gasps> How did that happen? Magic. <laughs> and looks up, and does like, it's messing with you. It's just science. Yeah, it's an illusion. I run out into the hallway and I go up to the kids and I'm like, all right, what's your favorite game? Oh, shit. He snapped out of it. (laughs) We like to play marbles. Oh, my God. I have no idea how to play that. It's easy. It's easy. Uh, there you see one of them. Yeah, you just take the marbles and then you just (laughs) throw them on the floor. (laughs) Just (laughs) yourself can say... Tied it. No, you can't just throw the marbles in the hallway. Can I try moving the marbles around with a little bit of wind? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and make a... a wind check. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a d20 instead of a d100. Oh, no. What'd you get? Two. Oh. You're kind of doing this. Um... There's like a slight movement of the marbles that you're just like, <gasps> you're not entirely sure how it worked, but there's a little bit of movement and they sort of look at it. <gasps> did you do that? Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> how did he do that? Magic. <laughs> Adela walks up. Science. <laughs> um, and then sort of. this. <laughs> begins to help scoop them up. They begin to teach you how to play. Basically, their version of marbles is just putting them on the ground and then flicking them into each other so that they bounce around and whoever can flick them the hardest so they fly the farthest wins. But they get into about a lot of arguments. Um, I don't know if you ever got their names, but it's Titus and Titan. Basically. <laughs> Titus and Titan. That's so cute. That's cute. so cute. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, you are playing marbles with them. Eventually, that nice savory broth smell fills the house, and you hear uh, Selk sort of yell, like, Okay, dinner time, everyone. (laughs) Give our guests a seat. Come on, spread out, spread out. Oh, it's it's all right. I can just sit somewhere else. Oh, no, no. Take some table. It's okay. Signet. She looks over at the the (laughs) water genasi in the coveralls, and she said, Yeah, I'm going, I'm going. (laughs) Sits up against the wall. Aww. Drinking soup. Um, but you're all able to sit at the table. They all sit on the floor and eat around like a low table together. Um, I would, over dinner, tell... Who is it? Tidal Wave and... What Titan, you know? Titan and Titus. <clears throat> I would tell Sorry. Titan and Titus some over-exaggerated story about how I fought a worm. A giant worm. A big, scary... Like a performance check. Worm. Worm. Performance is 18. 18. They are, like, quite literally on, like, their feet, <laughs> like, not listening, like, not eating their, their, their soup, not listening to anyone else talking, and they're just like, what did you do next? What did you do next? What? And so that I went up, and I said, you... Damn worm! Poo poo! <laughs> <Adele's> like, <laughs> and I punch the worm in the face. You see one of them go pow and sort of do like a little punch in the air. <laughs> pow pow! You damn worm! And then he sort of yells that out. <laughs> you yeah. Adele go, Titus! I. Yes! Azram, he's a. He's yes! Like children. Salk is like laughing under her breath. The mother just like. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of soup, just... (laughs) The soup is lovely, by the way. Thank you. It's an old, old family recipe. Uh, The same soup that they use over in uh, Adeline's shop. She points over towards Adela. No? 
Ad Ad Adeline is what Adeline. she says and points towards Adela and Ad Adeline, who oh, you know now is the full name is Adeline, sort of looks over and says, I sort of <laughs> hangs her head and says, yes, Adeline it's an old Adeline. family recipe. Oh. <sighs> Anyways. Um, so Selk kind of talks with you and says, well, tell us about yourselves. Where are you from? What are you doing here? Well, <laughs> can't all be just to, uh, you know, all the business back there. It's a long, a long story, a long trek and a long time we've known each other. We, we arrived here from Cineath. What? We met in Cineath, yeah. The big city. Wow. That's nice. Several months ago. This oh. circumstance that brought us together. There's a little bit of wonder that enters Selk's eyes as you say Cineath, and she's like, "What is it like? I've always wanted to go. I always, so I always meant to get around to leaving Weldon, but it just never happened." Well, I'm glad you didn't go in the past couple of months because <laughs> <laughs> it was going through a bit it's of a, a rough patch, bit but... rough there for oh, a while. I... But we help them, so they're it's okay now. Yeah, they're, they're rebuilding. Is... I see. Have you ever heard of Lord Never Ember? I hope not. <laughs> uh, uh, make an inside check. <laughs> Can I also? I look at Rhaenyra. Nine. <laughs> it's not hard to read this because Rhaenyra immediately is <laughs> chokes on his soup. Um, oh, no. She looks, she says, no, I, I've never, I never have. No, oh, okay. Never mind then. Thank God. Um... Adela sort of looks and says, I have. Oh, oh. Why'd you bring it up, Azram? Because we have Junior Never Ember sitting Why right here at the table. Bring that up? It's, it's, oh, it's, oh, God. We were That's talking a, about Cineath. I thought it was like a quirky little it's trivia. It's not thing. necessarily a good thing. We should move on from this. Topic. Well, obviously, Renair's not a bad person. Otherwise, no, we wouldn't have not. him around us. I don't, I like him, so. Um, uh,. Hi. Sorry. She looks and she says, "Your nobility." And she looks over <laughs> at him, who is like mouthful of soup, just like, <laughs> "Yes." <laughs> don't hold it against him. He's actually, a good we person. certainly don't. We certainly don't. <laughs> we definitely treat him like he's the dirt on the ground. Oh well, <laughs> I don't. Maybe you do. I don't. No, I was kidding, right, Bestie? Looks over at Vincent, looks over at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone is kind of like... <laughs> incredibly <laughs> awkward. So any, any, anyways. Um, incredibly yeah. awkward. So, so anyway, so yeah, yeah, we're from nice. Cineath. Yeah, yeah, Cineath, Cineath is, is nice. nice. We, we had a little, a little tavern there. Tell me, have you ever um, seen the sea? Have you ever... Oh, oh we swam in it. <laughs> you swam in it? Yeah. Did, What's yeah. it like? Bad, cold. cold and wet, and uh, you know, creatures. part of it I don't remember because I did oh, go unconscious. God, it's so big. Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought it was great. No, it's it's oh. honest. It's actually really scary. You know, they have creatures at the bottom of that of that the sea that's right outside. Oh, yeah, we saw we saw them. Well, I I didn't necessarily see them, but I almost I saw did. them. Oh goodness! Well. <laughs> <laughs> Versus I saw the yard <laughs> stare. <laughs> Just good <laughs> blank. He's like, oh god. Yeah, oh, I, I, they I were did. really terrifying. But, but yeah, yeah. if you if you like the beach, you like the beach. I just you know, <clears throat> it's kind of smelly in some parts and kind of gross. And it kind of elbows you a little bit. And it's like, kind of leans in and says, she really she really likes the beach. She's never. It's been, lovely. But she really... I thought it was well, great. Well, I thought that the water was refreshing and that the creatures underneath the water, who are we to judge them? It's their, it's their house. <laughs> yeah, they don't come up to the surface. It's not they like they were say. bothering oh, us. They, they were just... Okay, they just lived there. They just, yeah, they like, could okay. you imagine if somebody walked through your neighborhood and they're like, ugh, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, in some yeah, parts Della it's not so great, wins, but just like... in a lot of parts it's, it, is, it is actually quite lovely. Uh, it was kind of a bit like home. I want to go back. I don't. Yeah. Well, really? Not right now. We're so far. Hmm. Where do you um? Where do you plan on going next then? After Weldon, are you <sighs> staying in town for a while or? Well, we've already stayed for quite a bit longer than I think we had anticipated. I don't know if we're gonna be allowed to stay after no. the next 
couple of days. We're going to be here for at least till the end of the week. We've got a job, and then we're going to probably leave before we get into too much trouble. But the plan mm. was east. But Adelaide's ears kind of peak, like perk up. She looks. Just, you're you're heading east. Yeah. Um, where, well, that was the plan. But where east know. are you headed? Mm, that's a good I question. What's east of here? Well, the localities are are east, right? If you're following the golden route, then you're going to pass through the crown city of Shield first. That's the capital of Ansia. Um, then the path sort of splits a bit. You could head up and then head to the holy city of Gala, which is the main city of the church, or you mm, could head no. for the oh, east, and then you'd need to make your way through the. Um, then you'll just pass into the silk sands of the principalities. Huh. Principalities. I'd like to go there. Hmm. Um, Adela sort of speaks up. Or I guess if you don't want to, if you want to take a different path, which still kind of goes through the Painted Valley, you could, uh, you know, you could take the north eastern road. You could head up through um, Lunastra and then through the Orem Hills and then take a boat across to the principalities, which would put you off in the jungles, the foresting jungles, um, and then take another boat across if you can get boats. the money for it and boats. the boats out of character pirates <laughs> king of the pirates <laughs> yeah you need to yeah there's there's character. another path where where are you where in the principalities are you headed <laughs> that is the question we don't I don't think we really know we're just kind of. Going on a hunch. Wandering. Well, a lot of the big sites are in the Princelands. And then, uh, you know, and then if you're nobility or if you can get vouched for by some form of nobility, then you might be able to take one of the uh, fairies across to the actual Shining City itself. Though that is a feat if you're able to. If you ever do, feel free to tell me about it. Sounds like a challenge. (laughs) Renair, can you get us a boat? To the Shining City? No, absolutely not. It, that that is that is reserved for the elite of the elite of the elite. Not even my father, I think, could get a boat to the Shining City. Mm. I I think we can do it. We can build a boat. I don't yeah. know how to build a boat. I think it's just like some wood, right? It's a bit more than that, but yeah, it's technically just wood. I've only heard stories, but I'm very sure the Varan Navy patrols those waters quite heavily to make sure that no one gets across to the Shining City except those invited by the Immortal Prince himself. Those are your real choices. I suppose you could try and head back towards uh, Goldstead or so and try and take a different route through the Painted Valley, but... I don't you want know. to go back to Goldstead. Um, Lunestra, you said. Does that do anything for me? Does that... Lunestra always perks your interest because... Lunastra in your studies, um, you would have figured this out. Lunastra is where the Swords of Fortune were heralded as heroes. Mm. And also the place where their exploits most took place. Um, Lunastra itself is known as a holy city in its own regard, but make a religion check for me. As an aside to the listeners who don't know anything about the Swords of Fortune, <laughs> they will be explained later. Yes. Um, what was it? Religion. Not good. Ten. Ten is enough to know that the city is dedicated to an entity known as the Mother Knight, um, mm-hmm. which isn't as... The only thing you know about it is that they're not at all like the Morning Lord's religion. But they are accepted by the Morning Lord's religion as okay. canon, if that makes sense. Gotcha. But Lunastra holds a lot. You've heard talk of it. You talked about going up there in the previous arc before we started recording. You've talked about going up to Lunastra to learn more about the uh, possibility. It's where a lot of like um, the Magus Academy does their Feywild research. Is Lunastra is one of the research fields for that you see i mean if anybody is paying attention to vincent they'll know that he kind of perks up at that but he doesn't i guess he doesn't say anything hi this is christian the dungeon master for the strings of fate thank you for listening to episode 14 of our adventure 
I know there's a lot of information to hold on to, but I hope you're enjoying yourself. Before I hop into anything else, I have a big announcement to make. The first inaugural Strings of Fate Dungeon Depths collab giveaway, the first of many, has come to an end. We have picked a bunch of names, rolled a bunch of dice, and we have found our winner. The dice have chosen their new owner. So, without further ado, the winner of the Strings of Fate giveaway dice set is... At Lemon Shark on Twitter. Thank you so much for participating. I believe this is also Shala in the Discord. So this is doubly exciting for us as this is somebody that is in the community getting these dice. We really, really love that. We are going to reach out to you on Twitter and you're going to have 24 hours to respond to that. So please keep an eye on your messages, your DMs, and we will get you those dice as quickly as we can. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you to everyone who participated, who took part in our little giveaway, but just because this first giveaway is over doesn't mean it was our last. In fact, we have a lot of stuff planned very, very soon, so please keep an eye on our social media. Please keep an eye on the episodes. You don't want to miss what's coming up soon. Through it all, there is no way we could have done these giveaways without the help of our friends over at Dungeon Depths. Dungeon Depths is a store dedicated to quality gaming supplies with character. They deal in handmade dice, dice trays, dice vaults, apparel, stickers. They simply carry a multitude of fantastic pieces of Dungeons and & Dragons and RPG themed merchandise, which you can get at a discount if you use the code SOFTPOD. That's right, if you go to shopdungeondepths.com and use the code SOFTPOD, S-O-F, P-O-D at checkout, you can get a 10% discount on your purchase. This also extends to commissions from Olivia themselves. You can use the code SOFTPOD in the comments of your commission and get a 10% discount on whatever it is you're commissioning, whether that be handmade dice, a dice tray, a dice vault, a dice coffin. They are very, very cool. They are something that I'm thinking about getting at some point, but that's another topic entirely. Anyways, we couldn't have run this without them, and we are immensely thankful for their support. Thank you for sponsoring the show, and thank you for being a longtime supporter. If you're enjoying the show so far, please consider sharing it with people that you think will enjoy it as well. We've got a number of formats that you can share it on now, whether that be the YouTube video or on podcast forms as well. Sharing the show on social media allows it to be seen by people who may enjoy it as well. A great way to do this is by tweeting with the hashtag SoftPod. I go through that hashtag pretty much every day, and I use the names of the people who've tweeted as NPCs. And in fact, I'm going to need a lot of NPCs soon, so please, please, please start tweeting. It is a very, very good time to do so. Once again, thank you to dnddisability.com for the ADHD supplement, which we use for our bard Vincent. If you're on a podcast format, please consider leaving a rating for us if you can. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, as well as comment down below the YouTube algorithm. That's how it works. But I can help you along with the helping us by uh, giving you a comment prompt. Today's comment prompt is, if you could get any dice commissioned for your character, what would they look like? I'm actually very excited to hear what um, people say about that one. So please comment down below. Anyways, that is all the announcements for me. So, back to the show. So, so, a couple different routes. A couple different routes. Yes, you can make the choice. Um, one of them will require you to get a ship to sail you across the Sapphire Strait. Um, and the other one will take you through Crown City of Shield and through the deserts of the Silk Sands. Deserts. But also, mm, water. Don't is much it, like either. Mm, Maybe like a snow option instead. I don't like the cold, actually. I don't. I, don't I the hate cold. the cold. Oh, I hate it. I run. I run hot. Tiefling thing. Azure. I'm, I'm good is, with temperatures. I'm from the south, so. Oh, I'm, I prefer I'm, it warm. I'm from the north. I don't know where I'm from, but I just like I hate the hate the cold. Heat's better. So, so no snow, no desert. That sounds really dry. Really drying. Really not good for my pores. <laughs> I mean, and then the water, like, it could, I also, I don't, I'm not a big swimmer, 
but I, it could be fine. I Though I do swim. imagine it could. We swim. I don't think I've ever been Not on a big very boat well. before. We swim all the way underwater to a submarine. Oh. Yeah, and it was terrible. Titan. A what? Uh, oh yeah, submarine bigger than you could imagine. What is a submarine? It's, it's an underwater boat. Metal contraption. To a sunken ship. Basically, no. but also it's got it's got a ceiling, so it contains the whole ship, and um, it's it's all made of metal, so it can sustain itself under there, and it also has propellers, so it can to move on its own. It's it's like you know, very very new technology. It's very cool. It was in the shape of a man ray, but the person cross. But the person They're who like, had it was an absolute terrible person. He okay. You see these these kids just like they like. What is going on? <laughs> their their minds are absolutely blown by this oh, conversation. Show you. Um, anything else that you're talking about here? They're mostly just talking to you about your journey, your travels. It looks like no one here in this family has ever been outside of Weldon, really, except for Adela, who has traveled up to Goldstead. Wow. And and back. I guess we'll regale our tales a little bit, and uh... I tell. Another dramatic story about us being in the astral sea. <laughs> oh my god! Everyone is wrapped in this one. Even Signet kind of scooches close to the table and is like, "Bullshit! No way!" Yes. Really? Yes. The ground cracking underneath us. It was At some point, Vincent fell, and if it wasn't due to my heroic actions, oh no! Hold on a second. That's not the right story. <laughs> hold on a second. No, no, no. What happened was I fell off the side because of a a big hand that giant smacked hand. me. It was awful. It was terrifying. <laughs> the biggest hand I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> big piece hand. I don't know what it looks like. Um, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Um and and I fell off the side and and I grabbed onto it at the last moment and then and then Renair here got flown over and I mouthful of soup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I had to make a split decision. And I thought I was gonna. I thought I, 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 I made a choice, and I dropped, and I fell, and I, and, and, I, and you know what he did? I caught him, and then he flew. What? What? I didn't know I could, but I did. What? Make a persuasion check, because first of all, this story sounds like it's- bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely it's true. So a big hand. That's a cocked. Persuasion? Yep. 24. Everyone there is wrapped up in this, and they're just (laughs) completely blown away by what you are telling them. They are just, what in the world? I think I missed all of that. What? I was definitely unconscious. unconscious. <laughs> I, well, it was really, it was, it was a moment. It I'm, really was. It really I'm was sure the moment. It was great. And then, well, you know what? Ladara got popped back up. She she came back up to, to to consciousness, and then she took her gun and just right between the eyes. Everyone is kind of like shocked to hear you. You 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 have a gun. Yes, you and she's really it? good at using it. Whoa, don't, 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 don't. Selk actually speaks. I was like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're we right, don't. Okay. They don't have those around here. It, even, <laughs> even they point over towards Bonnie, who is kind of resting up. <laughs> she's got her guns and right out, right on there. It's like even that's like a little surprise. No one's caught her on those. I don't even. How do you guys fight? You're not allowed to use magic. You're not allowed to shoot. I mean, Adela, swords. We don't. Maybe? I mean, that's the thing. We don't down here. You, you guys know, should just... all become wizards or something. Honestly, you guys have connections to Vondrick gods, right? I feel like your connection to those those things are stronger than anyone else's. I feel like you, you have so much potential. And magic is, is so interesting. And it's so useful. Not just for, I, not just for violence, but just... In general, there are so many things you could do with it um, that could help people, heal people, and 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 I I don't know. There's just so much to be to be learned about it. You know, it's it's kind of new here, right? Everyone kind of stops, looks at you in a way that it's is getting a little <laughs> not scared or not like upset. They're just excited. kind of a little bit like, oh well. Listen. Um, Adela speaks up and says, listen, 
that's just not an option for the people down here. The whole Vondrick bloodlines thing, it, it's, it's only really useful if it's used in a factory. And even then, that's not something that the church knows. True. Right? I mean, if you look at the water down here, it's polluted. It's disgusting. And that's just how it is. Even, and we do our best with that, but but the only worth that our Fondric powers has to the people up top is the ability to pull the pollutants out of the water so that the city doesn't get fined. You should... Overthrow him. Selk kind of speaks up and says, I don't... Um, Titus Titan, if you could step out for a second. Um, they kind of nod their heads, stand up, blah, 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 mm, and stomp over. Um, and there's like this tense energy. She looks and Nadella says, there's something we haven't addressed here, and it's that Adelaide has talked about you all because she's heard from Miss Valentina even before your current situation that you were hired by the Thorne family for something. So before we say anything else, mm. we need to know that this information is not going to make it back. Oh, oh to the absolutely not. Make a persuasion check. Oh. 24. Okay, nice. 24? 30. 30. Um, 7. <laughs> what is it? 20? 24. Okay. Adela looks on and says, Okay, then. Listen. It doesn't take a genius to see that things are not great down here. We as a community have ourselves. We have each other. But... We just work in the factories, we clean up the overcity, we work in the houses, and then we come back down here and we, you know, but we live our lives. That's the thing. You have each other. You have a community. You have all these people, even just outside, all those people who are just willing to, to throw themselves at us if we were a threat to you. Uh, you, you have so many people on your side, and I think that defeatist attitude of this is just how it is is just not you can have a better life it's and not... i know it's hard i know it's not going to be easy but I, I think if you want a better life it's possible seeing it speaks up and says it's not defeatist it's it's reality it's it's what a lot of the people here believe, and that's changing. You know, I know that you've read the papers, and that's changing. There are people trying to convince them otherwise, but when you grow up your entire life being told that you exist to be a cog in a machine, you yeah. start to believe it. And these people... Uh, but that's... Their homes are provided by the Thorns and the Walshes and the business in Weldon. Their jobs... There's enough to keep food on the table, and it's just enough to do that. Can't you tell that the thought of saying, I, I'm just a cog in the machine, and this is the reality of it, that's exactly what they want you to think. I no. mean, screw pessimism, screw reality, realism. What about optimism, just for once? Adela nods and says, we know that that's not true. In fact, all the way back to the Vondrick teachings that so many people have lost because of church and the way things are speak exactly to that, that there is a piece of the gods in all of us. And that at the core of things, there is something bigger for everybody. But even though we know that, and you are quite literally preaching to the choir here there's so many that don't and so many that don't see that there's something better for them out there mm. and believe that this is their hand in life sure. that they are lesser than 
the people of the Overcity. Well, then how do we show them that? How do we show them that that's not true? This is getting into a topic that is very dangerous to delve into, <laughs> because just, there are people at work doing this. I just want to help. Is all. I, I I hate seeing this specific thing. I hate. I hate it. I I understand if you don't me, want me in your business, but. I just, I just want to help. Adela looks over at Ladara and Azram and says, And you too. You don't have to believe the same thing, but knowing certain information is very, very potentially dangerous. I don't fucking like this city. I don't like the church. Mm-hmm. I want to burn it to the ground myself. And I don't know what your relationship is with Miss Astrid Downs. But if it wasn't for her, we'd probably all be dead. Mm. I would definitely be dead. Yes. I was being sentenced. I was literally seconds away from possibly dying because of absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And they just were so willing to kill me for not doing anything. So oh, when I totally could have. But I didn't. It is a question on what side we stand on. Definitely not theirs. The church, definitely not. I am always on the side of the underdog. Always on the side of those who are left to nothing due to those in power. I despise it. You're on the side of the unheard, then? Absolutely. Astrid's a hero, but she represents more than just herself. She represents a new way of life. She represents a jam in the machine. She leads a group. The Tempest of the Unheard. What does Tempest mean? <laughs> like the definition of the word? <laughs> a storm? A storm. She seeks... Free Weldon of the Overcity. I think she's doing good work. I think so too. And it's tough work, and the world is against her on this. But, well, if you take the northeastern road out of Weldon, following that river, there's one shrine that the Divine Church of Healing wasn't able to pillage and burn to the ground. And that's where you'll find them. Hmm. Maybe we'll pay them a visit? Perhaps. But in the meanwhile, she's doing good work, and you all are stronger than you think you are. The family nods, looking to each other, and saying... We know. Good. Selk speaks up and says, It's just not the right time yet. But soon. It will be. I have a question. Um, Adelaide. Yes. Now, when we were back at the manor, you said something about, you know, the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lenara was gone for all of an hour, but she said it was only about 20 minutes or so. It was, it was a weird sort of moment. Do that... you know why that would happen? Everyone make an insight check. All at once. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. 20. God, what the fuck? 17. 14. Vincent. <laughs> You're the only one who notices Bonnie's eyes go wide for a second oh. as they are kind of confused by what you just said oh no um but they kind of lean back and just kind of keep listening 
Bonnie was out at the same time. Bonnie, how long were you gone for? Um, around the same time as uh, Adara, I'm pretty sure. Um, Bonnie responds, I uh, I left around a time that, Vincent, you were having a conversation mm. that um, I deemed to be private. Thank and then you. I, when I came back into the room, Ladara was there. And how long... How long were you gone? Like, how long do you think you were gone for? Like, Must have been close to an hour, I think. Yeah. Weird. Ladara. So, so is, that, is, that, is that a me thing? Is that, I, I mean, it's like a you issue. Adelaide, do you know anything about that? or? Adelaide kind of... She shakes her head and says, No, I, I don't... I was outside the room for most of the time... I didn't see Miss Ladara return until about an hour or so, uh, if you follow that timeline. Um, Have you had, have you experienced anything like that when you were there? I mean, you work there all the time, right? Have you, have you experienced a time where... Losing time. Where you've, you've, you thought you were going somewhere and uh, felt shorter than it actually was? like winces a little bit and sort of like not really I, I don't fully know uh, how to address I mean it just feels like time flies sometimes if I lose track of time but but nothing concrete like that um, Bonnie sort of looks at you Ladara and says because Bonnie wasn't there when you were talking about this time discrepancy mm -hmm. um i thought you were um busy talking with that person right i didn't want to interrupt you but you seem to be pretty engrossed in conversation what wait 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 <laughs> hold on a wait. second <laughs> what what are you talking about <laughs> hold on a second well i went around a corner and i heard you talking and well, if you'll forgive me, I was eavesdropping a little bit. You were talking about us and the party of people. Uh, I, I don't fully know what's going on, but I assume that you may have known the person or trusted them in some way. Or... Who was the... Did you see who, the person? Who was it? I'm sorry, what? Were you saying anything important? Yeah, what, what was that? Make, I, I don't know. This is a retroactive perception check God to see how me. much Bonnie oh saw. Please, Bonnie, I swear. Bonnie, roll high. Bonnie, please, please I'm going to cry. Steps. Please roll high. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a, a gamble of sorts. Great. I'm going to have to do leave it up to this because it's right on the cusp of it. Please. We're at a we're at a fifteen currently because plus eight. Heads or tails? Oh, I don't know. Tails. Oh, cocked it and landed on the dice. Cocked again. Cocked. It's a coin. Dice. It's a coin. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite literally landing on the dice. I'm just gonna have to do Move it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Bonnie looks at you and says, I only got a quick glimpse of scream. what scream. they looked like. What's but they it? were kind of, you know, long, flowing, blonde hair, kind of handsome, beautiful, sort of. They weren't wearing anything too super wild. Really? Uh, yeah. Do you know them? Sounds like someone I've talked to before. Were they wearing any blue, by chance? Not that I could see. Well, Bonnie, you know who Finnegan is. I've heard the name. You mentioned that you were talking about one of the Walshes. Is that who we're talking about? Pause. I mean, there are quite a few... Bonnie personally never met people. Finnegan. I'm sure. That... Does that mean that Bastard. I... I... That asshole bite my memory. That you're trying so oh. like as soon as you hear this, <laughs> these incongruent events, your head just starts to hurt because you cannot remember anything about it. But now there is this incongruency that you know what is happening. Vincent, go ahead and make an Arcana check with advantage for for me. Twenty-two. 
23. Vincent, you have personally <laughs> looked into a lot of magic that deals in the modification of one's memory. Mm -hmm. And there is a very experimental, very powerful spell that does exactly that, that changes one's memory to fit the description of another's. I'll say, don't, don't think too hard. You're going to give yourself a headache. Oh my God. I think, I think they use something on you. Powerful and experimental. Like magic? Magic, yes. Well, that is just... That's so illegal, that witch. <laughs> I'm going to tell the, the Church of the Morning Lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, that that's actually pretty awful. And Valentina trusted them. You can see the dart just steaming oh, with God. anger. Well, we'll go but have a word with them. You, you, They're going to be at the ball. We're going to have a word with them then. Oh, I'm absolutely going to have a word with them. Or two. Or none. Several S words. Wait, you, have to. you're saying that this was done without... You, you didn't accept this at all? They they simply... They, they used some sort of magic to manipulate you? I thought I was gone for 25 minutes and I didn't think I talked to anyone. You were talking pretty in-depth about the party and the people. You, I heard you mention a couple names, what they're capable of. What names? Azram, Vincent, yourself, Renair. Uh, I, I, I realized that I had stumbled across something and I was planning to talk with the others about it because I thought you maybe were being untoward. I'm sorry to have doubted you like that, but hearing this is a lot Bigger it is of an a lot issue. more worrying. Quite a bit. Quite a bit more worrying. Well, I guess that's a, one more thing to add to the plate of disasters we've got in front of us, right? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's go to the list. Missing items. Mm-hmm. Brother? <laughs> Beans? <laughs> da Vinky? Doja Cat song. <laughs> What else we got going on? No memory. Also no memory. Times two. Times two. <laughs> I got my memory intact. God, what's that Good like? Good for you. <laughs> um, and uh, the, uh, whole, the whole upper city looking for us. Just a whole terrible city, and I'm a fugitive. But yeah, we all are. I mean, I've been a but fugitive you... <laughs> in the past, but, you know, once again. But once again. We have a ball. Can't wait for it. I Can't think we should wait. cause some chaos. Aren't we going to do that anyways? Hmm. I would like to at least cause some chaos with Finnegan. Oh, me first. <laughs> we'll get in line. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone, to... No, that's all right. It's good to know. I just... On the note of the manor, hmm. we should probably head back tonight. I know that we said we were going to sleep here, but... Valentina did advise us against traveling during, during the, day. the day. You're right. You're right. And, and we did just sleep. So I'm kind of ready to go, you know, I'm kind of awake. I also um, don't want our presence to bring any more trouble here than it already has. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can cause havoc upstairs. Well, he's going to be down here. We'll come back. All right. We still have Adelaide. Okay, then we can come back a different day. If that's all right with you all. If Selk. the poison doesn't kill him. Selk smiles, and then kind of looks and says, Optimism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then looks towards Rusty and says, You're welcome to visit whenever you'd like. Thank you. Be careful. And Adela, sorry for being so mean to you in the street. Sorry for lying to you. Aww. <laughs> Um, she smiles and says, be careful on your way out. I have a feeling, though it's been some time, it's probably been like an hour or, or two at this point. I'm leaning more towards like it being like an hour or so. But those watch and the night might still be out there. So just keep an eye out. All right. Okay. Well, then I guess we'll be off then. Okay. And um, say goodbye to the kids for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do we? I don't know. 
we didn't like long rest while we were here, did we? Like you that? long rested earlier. You already long rested like a little bit ago. You yeah, you short rested up. here, if that helps. I was just trying to see if I could use Pass Without a Trace again. No, I unfortunately, cannot. you did not. So good luck, everyone. <laughs> As you are waved out, Titus and Titan lean out of their room already in like their little, it's like these long shirts that just kind of go down to the, like below their knees and like, bye, as they're being <laughs> ready for Aww. bed. I'm going to use prestidigitation as they're, I'm waving bye and I'm going to wave in a little, uh, a little like uh, butterfly made of like white light will like shoot out of my hand, like a little <gasps> magic. Wait, is that magic? And the adult's like, it's science. And then sort of pushes them into the room. Um, and then the door is shut as you're waved off by everyone. Adelaide says, I'll see you all tomorrow. But see you. Just be safe. Okay. All right. We're heading out. Okay. Uh, everyone go ahead and give me a stealth check first from everybody. No plus 10 this time, just regular. So right. <laughs> 21. Natural 20. Uh-oh. 10. 19. 21. Um, with a natural 20 and an over 20 for Bonnie, um, you just, you passed the group check. Uh, the DC was 20. Um, so that was, so one of these is like a double success. Um, you were able to slink through the city. Now everyone give me a perception check. Um, I got a 20. 20? Natural one. Natural one. Six. Six. <laughs> All right, right everyone. Uh, Ladara, mm -hmm. as you are leaving this twisted alleyway, the apartment complex, um, you are making your way through the alleyway itself, uh, and as you are about to turn a corner, you sort of hold up, as you can hear from around the corner, that gruff voice I'm talking to the Weldon Watch. Um, with that stealth, you're able to peek around, look past the corner and you can see that further down the road um you can see um a few of the weldon watch including toby lined up on the wall um listening to orders from the night of the morning lord um and you can hear him begin to say yes well our search has turned up fruitless but do not worry we will try again in the morrow for now you're dismissed I have some leads to tie up here of my own. Um, and uh, you see the Weldon Watch sort of give a salute and then make their way down the alley. Um, and you see him pull that book from his satchel and just start to thumb through it. What if we just polymorphed him right now? I was about to say. <laughs> what if we just, like... Do it. Or something. Please. Your move. I, I would like that notebook. Is everyone leave? Everyone's gone? The Weldon Watch has pretty much begun making their way down. You see that he stopped in this alleyway to read. You see he raises his hand and like a light cantrip appears so that he can see um, in the flickering electric light. Just read the words on the page. What do you want us um, to do? Can I... Do you want me to bane him first? And then polymorph... You, like, you want to polymorph him? Or do you, do you want to be sneaky? What do you want to do? You I can hex him and then polymorph him. Do well, it. if you want a hex, I can polymorph. Save your soul slots. What's your spell save DC? Not great. Mine's pretty good. Okay. I don't know if it, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Out of character, you could bane him, and then he'd have, like, a d4 minus to if, his... Yeah, that's what I was gonna... I was, I was sure. saying, if I could do that. But also, hex is... Uh, disadvantage. Disadvantage. Um, I also have... You could just. We could do all three. Yeah, you could <laughs> fucking dump. Is there anything I could do? <laughs> would you like to? Would you like to just a uh, one, two, three, wham, bam, slam? A wham, bam, slam. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, I can also banish. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a hole. <laughs> he would a go hole. to a different realm. I need the book. He would go with the book. Oh. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll cast hex at him. Sure. And for this, yeah, okay, hex first. Disadvantage he... on wisdom. Okay. Simultaneously, I will do Bane. A silvery mist with little crackles of lightning in it wrap around, starting from the leg. And you see as he's reading, what in the, what in the world? Um, he's beginning to notice he's all of a sudden Bane. Oh, uh, Polymorph. Well, he has to, he, there's a save for Bane. Actually. There's a save for Bane? Yeah. What's is it? What is it? It's a charisma. Okay. Um, he is proficient in those, I think. What's your spell save, DC? 16. 15. <laughs> Plus five. Uh -oh. Anyways. Um, Baned? 
Um, and then and what are you doing, Ladara? You're are you gonna yeah. polymorph him? Yes. Because I was gonna run up behind him and keep his mouth shut, so if you're good. I mean, oh yeah, good. Yeah, okay, cool. Everyone. Go. Okay. Polymorph. Disadvantage. What does he turn into? <sighs> well, it's a wisdom saving throw, correct? Yep. The lower of the rolls was a two minus two <laughs> plus like eight or something. So it's eight. But you know. What do you polymorph him into? <laughs> A turtle. <laughs> the Azure and Vincent special. The Polymorph special. And to nice. sort of give this the intention, I know the intention of what you're trying to do. The book is still there. Oh, it's kind God. of hits the ground. Run. As the turtle is. <laughs> kind Can of I just like, like biting. Wait, 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 wait. Can I throw my like scarf over the turtle so it yeah. can't see anything? Exactly. You run up, throw your scarf over the turtle, see its head just kind of start to wiggle as best it can. Can't really do much there. You scoop up your notebook, uh, and then you're all making a run. I'm yeah. immediately shoving it in my bag and running. You all begin to make a run for it. Do you grab your scarf? Yeah, or you... yeah I'll grab my scarf. Turn him around so he's I'll not cast... looking at us. Yeah, I'll, I'll make Darkness. it so... Darkness on the turtle. On the turtle, I'm gonna run. <laughs> the darkness engulfs the turtle yeah. in the alleyway. Who is completely? This person has went from like reading to having their whole night fucked up for yeah. like the next hour as they are shrouded in darkness Get and a, a turtle. Can I like uh, like on. throw him in the water or something? Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's I mean, you fine. could. <laughs> he's not gonna like turn back, right? Yeah, he's a turtle. Yeah, he'll, he'll he get swept swimming? up in, in the, the current. In the darkness, like he can't. See I know. I just want him to like suffer. I want yeah, him to like but, turn but then he back might be able and he's to like see in the sewers and like know where we're at. Throw him in the sewer. You can throw him in the sewer, right? Just put you him just down toss there. Toss him down there. You can <laughs> Make try. sure he doesn't see you. And yeah, I'll do yeah. it. So I'll also I'll just disguise myself. Okay. <laughs> Asram runs into the darkness, picks up the turtle, runs out the other side of the darkness, makes his way he's, over to he where goes the into the darkness as himself. He comes out, out as someone a different else. person. He comes out as a different person, grabs the turtle, runs down the alleyway to the catwalk, <laughs> then throws the turtle into the turtle goes like a frisbee, just <laughs> into the water where it just as not as big enough a drop to do damage to it. As I'm throwing him, I would say, the devil says hello. Oh. You. The turtle goes spinning, flying. It can't respond. It's a turtle. It's just... It's a turtle. <laughs> into the... Just splashes into the rapids of the river. And we run. Okay, let's and go. And you let's go, bolt let's go. it. Um, I'm going to roll a uh, luck check. So, heads or tails. This is to see if something in the river fucking <gasps> knocks him. Oh. turtles don't have no much hit points. Heads. Oh. I'm just going to do it the regular way. Heads. You're good. <laughs> you're not sure. It's the turtle. You're running. Uh, you're running. Now for another check. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. You are running. Running with your notebook. Um, then, your prize. You're trying to make your way back through the streets as best you can. Stealthing. Yeah. Let's. Well. Yes. let's uh, when we get a certain distance, I'm like, let's composed. actually be very, let's, let's, let's be composed. Not be suspicious. Don't, don't um, be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Make one more <laughs> perception check for me. Oh, okay. Twenty-two. Only a six. Uh, yeah, sixteen. Sixteen. Six. Six. Twenty-two. Ladara, you spotted again as you compose yourself, begin to sneak through the streets. You can see that the crowds are dying down as the night gets later and later. There's still people outside at bars and at late night restaurants that seem to be open specifically for workers returning late from their jobs. Um, you catch a face very, very quickly in the crowd. You see somebody that you didn't expect to see down here as move, making her way through the crowd. Hooded, cloak pulled up. Valentina is very subtly making her way in the same direction as you all, but Sister. doesn't seem to have spotted you. Sis, oh what are you doing? I'm gonna just follow behind and go back sneakily. Okay. Um, make a stealth check, everyone, to get. Uh, I guess do you point this out to everybody? Yeah, I probably like. Um, hey, yo, that's that's Valentina. What is she doing down here? What was it? Stealth. Stealth. Yep. 20. Also a 20. 25. 
make uh oh, 27. yeah, yeah. 25 20, 27 sorry 27 Shit. everyone else is good on this end you're able to cut across the crowd wait for valentina to pass and then begin to follow her um uh, let me see. At this point, it's fairly late. Okay. You see as you are watching. Uh, you can make another perception check if you like. Or an insight check. If it, whatever you prefer. Don't give different answers. Night six. <laughs> I rolled a six on every single perception check. Insight or perception. Whichever I got you 19. 19. I would love to do an insight and I got a 27. Damn. Valentina is walking with purpose and a bit of a coyness. There's a, and with that insight check and with that perception check, you can see that she's clutching a bag at her side very tightly, very like sealed bag. Um, you can see that there's like a buckle and like even like a padlock on the side of it. Um, as she's making her way, you follow her for quite some time as you sneak through the crowd making your way up the stairs, giving her some time to make her way up so that it's not super obvious as not many people come up out of the Undercity at this hour. And eventually you follow her all the way back through the streets of Weldon, making your best attempt to stay hidden. It looks like most of the guard has given up their search as the night has gotten much later. And you follow her all the way back to the Thorn Manor. You see her creep in through the same side gate that Adelaide took. Make her way through. Make another stealth check. Because now you're following through her through like the path to the manor. 23. 23? 25. 25? Natural 20 plus 5. Nice. You're all good to go. Come on, above 20, every single one of us. You are able to creep your way up to follow Valentina all the way to where she enters through a side door. With those checks, you're able to wait a little bit, then proceed through the same side door, make your way through the long hallways. You 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 eventually see that you end up in a back room, sort of like kitchen place, like a behind the scenes where the wait staff and the cooks would be, but it's empty at this time at night. You can see there's like a big island in the center with equipment that's been cleaned and... Just equipment that is used for cooking, that thing. That sort of thing. Um, You watch Valentina, instead of turning into the hallway, turn towards the cellar. Oh. And just kind of pick the lock. In her own home. And then... (laughs) Can I kind of sneak a... Try to sneak a peek to see if I see anything down there before the door shuts? Make a perception check. 21. You see that that cellar in particular is full of casks and of wine. Hmm. Um, with, an, with your passive, I think, I think you have good passive insight um, or investigation. What's I have investigation? all three. I have 20 perce- passive perception, 20 passive insight, 12 investigation. Okay, so with your memory, because you were actually there. You specified that you were there. You get the sense that this cellar is connected to the same one that you saw when you were in the foyer, basically. The one that they were rolling all those casks of ale into. Uh Uh-huh. But the cellar door closes behind Valentina, and you all are left just creeping around. I I would say Ladara most likely is the one who took, like, the plunge to, like, Mm -hmm. go closer at that point everyone else is just kind of in the same room yeah um looks like valentina's got some secrets let's head back up all right okay you make your way back up to your room we should probably go ask her about well maybe not ask her about the poison i don't know we can talk to her tomorrow about it i mean we're awake now yeah but she seems a little busy i know but did 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 we want to... And also then we were f- basically following her. I don't want her to get the wrong idea of right. us. Did we want to sleep right now? Or did we want to stay up and... Chat? Do some investigating? I don't know. Chat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
If you want to chat, I feel like we've been chatting a lot. Um, I mean, the Valentina has some books, right? Mm-hmm. Valentina has some books. Yeah, let's read them. I actually would like to read this notebook as well. All right, so we'll just have a little reading party. We can see what's inside. Yeah. I have my book. You I'll have try a to book? see. Yeah, Vincent got me a book. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's called. What is it called again, Christian? The Saltwater Man. It's called The Saltwater Man. It's a classic. <laughs> oh, cool. I can't wait. So we'll just go back up. You head up to your room. You all begin to dive into the library. But Ladara, you. You're diving into your notebook. Absolutely, I am. You've always intentionally found the first blank page, never once even looking at the front cover, just because the words in there are left by your mother. And at some point it just became routine. Just skip to the first next blank page and write your notes. But this notebook is thick. There's a lot of pages that are filled out. And it's taken a lot of time to quell and push down that curiosity. So there's a bit of trepidation opening the front cover. And right there, not on a blank page, just written into the cover of this notebook, there's something written. I leave this message in the hopes it finds you in prosperity and peace to my darling Dara and my little Elle. I hope that the world has been kind to you in ways that we have not yet seen. For my Ellie, I hope that the world has become one that accepts you as you are and can find beauty in that which they refuse to understand. And I pray that you are strong in the face of unkindness and that you lean on your sister when life is difficult. And for my fearsome Dara, precocious and so full of life, I pray for respite, that you see the beauty of the world and not only its ugliness, that you, like myself, You've been forced to grow so quickly and to be so strong. But my hope for you is to find those that you can rely on. Even the strongest of wings must roost. It is not a folly to show weakness, but a blessing to find those you can show weakness to. I've left for you the only treasure I hold, the only inheritance that I can offer. Your mother has not spent her life cooped in this home waiting on your fool of a father. Yes, I've seen the world in my own ways. And there was a time where some would have called me an adventurer. But the term never truly fit. I did not seek danger and riches. I only sought to see the beauty of the world and take in its sights for myself. I wandered the world with no direction and no intention beyond wandering. But I have found my fair share of adventure, and I have seen the world in its most wondrous places and its darkest moments. I can only hope that this notebook chronicling my journeys will be of some use to you. Care for each other, my loves, long after I am gone. In this world you may find that for a time, the two of you are all you will have. And that is enough. And as you begin just to page through the notebook itself, you see long journal entries and beautiful sketches, much like the ones you do of your own journeys, of far off places and wonderful vistas. You find a notebook of a wanderer.
We see a writhing town of excess, alight with electricity and the buzz of thrill-seeking nobles from the perspective of an outsider, far above. Around them, gears churn in an arrhythmic melody, subtle machinations that play on repeat day in and day out. They smile because the orchestra is falling into place. They smile as the alchemist toils endlessly, tuning the instruments of their own destruction. They smile as the fraud stalks below, composing the piece part by part. They smile as old friends have found their way, fate intertwining them again, this time as an unwilling audience. The conductor smiles. The symphony is at hand. I'll be honest with you, Azrim, this is quite painful on my throat. Don't worry, don't worry. You'll get used to it eventually. Well, I feel like I'm also the only one doing this, because no. I'm looking at you and you're not actually changing your voice. No, I definitely am. It's just like an air thing. You can't really tell. Is that how that works? Yeah, it's like air. Okay, thank you for listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Wow, that was amazing. Why do I feel so embarrassed? See you guys next week. <laughs>